Art Media. I'm your guest hostess, Marilyn Martin, and today I'll be speaking to the director of the independent film Mad Cowgirl, Gregory Hatanaka. So, why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself, Mr. Gregory Hatanaka? What do you want to know? Uh, just anything. I didn't attend film school. Really? I started out in the business side of, uh, of, of the industry mm -hmm. and wanted to make movies many years after. I mean, I always wanted to direct. Uh, never had the opportunity. There's always been, you know, false starts, that sort of thing. And so finally, I did not make my... After being 12 years in the industry, I didn't actually make my first film till only like three years ago. And then I followed up with that with Mad Mad Cover two years later. So it's all just hands on from what you say. It's right? all self taught, hands on. I was a dropout of community college. Oh wow. Uh, no film no filmmaking classes, no courses, nothing in, you know, it's all reading books and most importantly watching movies. You know. Just watch enough movies. That's the best education to be able to go and watch, you know, French movies or grindhouse movies and Sort of, that sort of thing. You understand? Yeah, I totally understand. <laughs> Developing the script, what was the genre of the film? There wasn't a genre. Well, you know, it, it, it was a drama. It was a drama. Yeah, that was the genre. And then it evolved, and you know, there's certain elements that were added to it, and it became multi genre. Uh, people's, everybody, you know, everybody has an addiction, so. Just a way of, if I, I, th I felt that she has multiple addictions in this movie, maybe the audience, you say like, okay, I, I'm, I, li I love to eat so I can relate to that addiction, or okay. I'm obsessed with sex so maybe this guy relates to that addiction. You know, we have multiple addictions to please right. the whole audience you know, in this okay. movie. She loves kung fu movies, so people who love cult movies, they, they, you know, they can relate to that, yeah. Right, an equal opportunity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a, con see. a convenience store of addictions we have it, you know, in this movie. Okay. <laughs> we have it all. <laughs> We wanted to we wanted to make a make a movie or the way we make movies is we, we, we create an environment where people are free to kind of express and we adapt those ideas and we we don't stick to a script as long as the emotions are there and uh, people contribute to it when we're rehearsing in the process of that. Okay. Uh, so in terms of style, I have no idea. I know that I intended to create this film like a Tarkovsky meditative piece and then it, it evolved into Tarkovsky and. Chang Che, the Shaw Brothers director, and uh, you know, Grindhouse, the yeah. genre. It evolves to that by the end of the movie, and then it kind of turns itself around and it becomes a kind of meditative piece again, I hope, or character study, Cassavetes or whatever. Uh, were there any major scenes that were cut out from the film? Um, yes. Um, can you tell us which <laughs> ones they were? Uh, let's see. Well, because originally we wanted this movie to be like a, a, a three hour epic, you know, we would say like this is a good drama and we want to make it like a Bollywood movie with an intermission and you know like a movie movie going experience where the audience sits down, they hear the music, the intro, the, the, the intro and, and then 90 minutes you get to the first turning point and then there's an intermission and, and then the second half she deals with things and then people leave and the exit music, you know, like 2001 A Space Odyssey. Wow. Uh, <clears throat> but obviously we realized that that wasn't practical when, when to release a three hour movie so quite a bit was lost. Uh, sub, uh, peripheral characters, supporting characters were uh, pared down so that what remains is her story mm -hmm. as opposed to the whole uh, her whole milieu, the world, you know, the multiple characters. It's, it's more focused on her now, this version. But it originally ran two hours and 45 minutes. Wow. And, you know, uh, so some people say they like that version. I don't know. <laughs> well, I'd, I'd, like to see, I'd like to see it. <laughs> Will you ever release that version as a director's cut? 
No, we might. I mean, we might. Yeah, I think once the work is out there, enough people have seen it, how many times can you keep revising your work? I mean, composers in the 1800s kept revising it each time they perform it, right? We could do that. The question is, do I want to go back and do it? Because I'm distant now and I'm focusing on the next material that interests me now. You know? Mm, I see. Yeah. So, how do you handle your actors when you're on set? How do you work with them? With the kettle prod. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. Uh, what do you mean, how, how do I handle them? I mean... <laughs> <laughs> In what way? <laughs> It was, a, it was a terrific, terrific cast. I, uh, I had worked with Sarah Lassay, the lead, in my first film, Until the Night, so I already had that relationship. And so she brought along James Duvall, because she, she had uh, made a couple pictures with him, including a Greg Iraqi film called Nowhere. And then I had met Walter Koenig at a party and uh, pitched the project to him, and he thought it would be terrific. And it, it, we really were um, lucky to have such a cool ensemble cast. You know, who were willing to do a film this no budgeted, and this you know, this difficult in that they didn't actually see the vision of what I was doing. You know, uh, contributions from the actors—they're important. Uh, the actors are a large part of this movie making process, this film making process, and so uh, we listen to them, their insights, their experiences, and we add and develop the characters during the process of shooting. Do you allow improv? Uh, well, improv, so long as it's with a confined area. Like, I literally, we would say, okay, we'd go to Sarah, and, the, and Walter Koenig, and I would, uh, Sarah, let's say, the lead, and I would say, okay, well, this is what the scene is. We don't quite have it scripted. These were some, there were several small scenes that were not scripted, but we, I said, here's the idea, and here's what's going to happen. And I actually literally would direct this like a silent movie. She would be here, and I would say, okay, you know, off camera, I would say, okay, now breathe hard, or scream here, or look to the left, look to the right. It was literally like a silent movie, you know. We were able to do that. And then, I mean, it was very hard to edit, to edit my voice out constantly, but uh, that's kind of how we did it, and I think they liked it. Uh, it was part of a new experience for them, you know, to be able to give ideas, and then it's in the scene the next day, right? So. Have you ever been in a fist fight? No. No? No. Oh. <laughs> I've been in a kung fu fight. Oh, yeah? Oh, <laughs> I think I lost. You think you <laughs> this lost? This was years ago. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> what was the fight over? I, I don't recall. It was, it was in uh, grammar school. <laughs> Are you ticklish? Uh, no. No? So I can't tickle you. If you want to, yeah. Can I? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure you want to. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Don't you dare turn into one of them. You know that that's not you. Do you really want to be like that? Do you really want to be like that? Go ahead and be yourself. If they don't like you, surely someone else will. Fine. You're watching In Art Media. Previously on In Art Media. Hello? Mr. Evans? You have beautiful eyes. What does this have to do with the audition? Please, sit down. What's your blood type?